Life Church kids. This is another week of Children's Church Lesson online. We can't be here together because of all the sickness that's going on around, but we can be here in spirit, and we can be together in spirit. And as you watch online, I pray that this is going to be a time of blessing for you, for everyone watching. Let's join in a word of prayer and ask the Lord to bless this time. Father, we thank you for this lesson. We thank you for the goodness that you've shown to us. And Lord, I pray as we have this lesson that you would speak to our hearts and that you would show us from your word the things that you want us to do, the way that you want us to live. And we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, our lesson this morning, and I hope you've had a chance to watch the video. Sister Donna has already posted the video that goes along with the children's church lesson. Our lesson this morning is about the bronze snake. Yes, I said that right, snake. I know some of you guys are going, hey, I don't like snakes. Me neither. I don't care for snakes too much. But this was a snake that was used for good. Now, let me recap for you. If you remember, the Israelites were coming out of where? And think to yourself, where were the Israelites coming out of when, the, when God had released them from their slavery? And he, they were in a land. And what was that land? That land was Egypt. And he brought them out of Egypt through many, uh, many miracles. He, he did the ten plagues. And finally, the Pharaoh or the king of Egypt said, Hebrews or Israelites, you can go. Please leave. Get out of here. We don't want you around here anymore. You're trouble. And the first thing they did was they got to the Red Sea. Now they've got the sea in front of them. And they've got the Egyptian army behind them. And the Egyptian army is looking to kill them because the Pharaoh had changed his mind. said, what do we do? And let them all go. Let all our slaves go. And they had no place to go. And they cried out to Moses, Moses, we're going to die. We're going to die here. Moses, what do we do? And Moses prayed to God, and God caused the east wind to blow all night. And what did he do? He split the Red Sea in two. And they walked right through the middle of the sea on dry land. And then when they got to the other side, and the Egyptian army saw what had happened, they took off in their chariots, and they tried to follow them. And God said, Whoop! And the seas went back over them and drowned the armies of Pharaoh. And Pharaoh looked, and all his armies were drowned and killed. And the children of Israel rejoiced because the Lord had done a wonderful thing, but it didn't take them too long before they started complaining. You see, because they were in a desert. Moses, we don't have any food. Moses, we don't have any water. And Moses provided food and water. And God told Moses, here's a rock. A big rock, and I want you to strike that rock twice, and water is going to come out. And Moses did. He struck the rock, and water came out, and they had all they needed to create. You see, God provided for the Israelites. God provided food. Do you remember what food that he provided? It was called manna. Manna was the Hebrew name for, what is it? What is it? They had no idea what it was. But they could use it to cook with. They could use it to make all sorts of food with. And so for, for many years, they had manna in the wilderness. You see, because in the desert, there's not a whole lot of food out there, and there's not a whole lot of water. And God provided them water every time they needed water. God provided them food every time they needed food. When they got tired of the manna, God provided them quails, birds that they could kill and eat. And so finally, they came around, and Egypt is down here, and they came down to, uh, to Mount Sinai, Mount Sinai, where they got the Ten Commandments, and then they went up, and the, the promised land was up in here. This is the promised land. Promised land. Land. And they came up to the edge of the promised land, and if you remember from the lesson, uh, from the lesson, uh, what was it, last week, they got to the edge of the promised land, and, and Moses sent out spies, and they looked over the land, and 10 came back and said, oh, my goodness, we can't do this. Oh, my goodness, we're going to die. We, it would have been better if we'd stayed in Egypt. And two said, hey, God is with us. We can do this. But the children of Israel 
chose to listen to the ten instead of to listen to the two. And so God said, no, you're not going into the promised land yet. You're going to be, uh, you're going to be rejected. And those that said, uh, we can't do this, all the adults, you said, you're going to die in the wilderness? Fine, you're going to die in the wilderness. But there are two that are going to go into the promised land. Mo, uh, Joshua and Caleb would be the two. And God said, turn around and go back into the wilderness. And they did. Now, God had provided many, many good things for them. God had made many miracles for them just in order to provide them food and to provide them water. And they got down into the desert again, and they ran out of water. Moses, we're going to die. Moses, I wish we'd have stayed in Egypt. Moses, why did you bring us out here in this desert to die? And finally, Moses got tired of it, and, and there was the rock. Now, some people say that this rock followed them. All over. And there, there's a scripture in the New Testament that almost sounds like that rock followed them everywhere that they went. But the rock was there. And God said to Moses, Moses, I want you to speak to the rock. What was the instruction? Speak to the rock and water would come out. But see, Moses was mad. And I understand that because sometimes we get so frustrated. You get people coming. I need this. I want this. I want this. And finally, you just throw up your hands and say, stop. Leave me alone. Moses got frustrated like that. And he said, do I have to strike this rock? And he took his stick and he struck the rock twice. And water came out. Is that what God told him to do? No, it isn't. What did God tell him to do? You remember what I said? God said, speak to the rock. And the water would flow out. Instead, Moses took his rod and he struck the rock. Now, water still came out. God wasn't going to punish Israel for that. But Moses made a big mistake there. And God said, Moses, because you cannot listen to me, you won't listen to me. And now you're not going to go into the promised land either. I'm, I can't let you go in because you don't obey me either. And I'm sure Moses wasn't very happy with it, but Moses had a job to do. He was leading the Israelites. And so they got to the point, And finally they got to the land of Eden down here. The land was called Edom. Now, the people of Edom were some distant relatives of the Israelites. If you remember, uh, Abraham was all their father, everybody's father, uh, they descended from Abraham. And Abraham had Isaac. And Isaac had two sons, Jacob and Esau. And Esau's, uh, now the his Israelites came from Jacob. Jacob's other name was Israel. And so the Israelites came from Jacob. But the Edomites came from Esau. And so they were related. And they got to the border of Edom. <coughs> and Moses said to the king of Edom, sent messengers saying, hey, we need to pass through your land. I promise we will not take anything from you. All we need to do is just pass through. Please let us. And the king of Edom, you would think that being family, he would say, hey, yeah, yeah, come on through. And you know what? We'll, we'll give you what you need. But instead, he said, no, you're not coming through our land. No, go away. You're not going to come through our land. And they had to go around Edom. They had to go around Edom to where they were going. And again, the children of Israel, you know, in spite of all the wonderful things, what did, they, what did God do when they came to the Red Sea? He split the sea for them. What did God do when they had no food? He sent manna and he sent quails. What did God do when they had no water? On more than one occasion, he made, he made water come out of a rock. And here, they, as they're coming around the land of Edom, they complained to Moses again. Moses, God has left us out here in the wilderness to die. Moses, we have no food. Moses, what are you going to do? Moses, it would have been better if we stayed in the land of Egypt. At least in the land of Egypt, we had all the food we wanted. And finally, That's enough. And punishment came upon the Israelites. And it said that God sent snakes in among the Israelites. And it bit some of the people. And, the, and some of the people died from the snake bites, from the venom. I hope none of you have ever been bitten by a snake. But have you ever handled a snake? You know, snakes are kind of creepy. I don't like snakes. But uh, 
I've had to handle a snake before. I had to I had to get rid of a rattlesnake once, right out here, out in front of our church. I had to get rid of a rattlesnake. Boy, let me tell you something. I was real careful because if that thing bit me, I'd be in big trouble. Rattlesnakes are venomous. And you could die from a rattlesnake bite if you don't get it uh, taken care of right away. And so I was being real careful. It was a baby rattler, but I was going to be really careful that that thing couldn't bite me. And I got rid of it. But... The snakes bit some of the people, and, and some of the people died. And they cried out to Moses, Moses, we've got these snakes that are biting us. What do we do? And Moses said to God, God, what do we do? What are we going to do about this? And God said, I want you to put a, uh, to create a, a bronze snake. I want you to create a bronze snake and put it up on a pole up high where everybody can see it. And if anybody gets bitten, if they look at the snake... If they look at that snake up on the pole, that they'll be healed, that they'll be saved. And that's how it worked. If anybody got bitten, <coughs> excuse me, if anybody got bitten, all they had to do was to look at that snake and they were healed. Now, why would God do something like that? Because God wanted them to have to trust him. If you got bitten by a snake and I said, all you need to do is look at this bronze snake and you're going to live. And then, wait a minute, what do you mean? Don't, don't I have to get medical attention? Don't I have to do this? Don't I have to do that? No, all you have to do is look at the bronze snake. Now, am I saying that that's, that that's the way it works today? If you get bitten by a snake, all you have to do is look at a picture of a snake and you're going to be healed? No. No, please seek medical attention if you get bitten by a snake. Heaven forbid you should get bitten. But God was trying to see if Israel would learn to trust him. And people began to do that. And people began to look at the snake. And I, I can't draw, but if the snake's up on a pole and you got the snake kind of like that, and there's the head of the snake, and all you had to do is look at that and you'd be healed. God was trying to see whether Israel would finally trust him, and they did. And people were healed of, the, of their snake bites, and, and they didn't die anymore. You see, God wants us to learn to trust him. And we've done the whole thing with the trust fall before, you know, where somebody falls over backwards, and you're just trusting that the person back of you is going to catch you. You got to have trust in that person that's standing behind you. And God wants us to trust him. God will never let you down. God will never let you go. God will always be there for you. I can prove that. I have seen it happen in my life so many times. God will always be there for you if you will trust in him. And you know, there's something that we have healing also. And it's not a pole. It's in the form of a cross. You see, we've all been sick. And we've all had a disease that would cause us to die. You know what that disease is? That disease is called sin. And the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. Sin is leads to death. Just like the snake bite. Just like the snake bite. You see, for them, being bitten by the snake was their illness. That was their disease. For us, it's sin. What do, we mean? What do I mean, sin? Sin meaning that we disobey God. That we know the right thing to do and we don't do it. That is sin in our lives. But God has made a way that we can be healed of our sin. And that is, he, he uh, crucified his own son. Crucified means to be put on a cross. It's almost as if they put a pole up and they put Jesus up on that pole. And Jesus died on the cross. Why? Because God knew that we needed a sacrifice for our sin. We were sick. We were sick with sin. And God knew that we needed a healing. 
And that healing was Jesus on the cross. And if we will trust in Jesus, if we will look to Jesus on the cross, not just look at a picture of Jesus up on the cross, but I mean if we will trust in Jesus, trust that he died for our sins, that we could be healed from that sickness, which is sin. And all that, it's, it's a, well, wait a minute, that's too simple. That's too simple. How can I, is, is that all? Yes, that's all. Confess your sins to Jesus and believe that God raised him from the dead and you will be saved. That's how it works. And so God has provided a healing. Now, let me, let me tell you this too. <coughs> Now we talk about sin as, as a uh, we talk about sin as a disease. But what if you have even a, a, a sickness? Now, those of you that have been uh, hearing the news or or that, and and I hope I don't scare you with this, but there's a disease going around right now, and everybody's afraid of it. But you see, Jesus is our healer. We don't have to be afraid. We don't have to be afraid of diseases. We don't have to be afraid of what's out there. We take precautions. We, that's why we're, we're recording this children's church lesson instead of having all of the kids in here. Because we need to take precautions. Because we don't want to spread the sickness. But what happens if we do get sick? Jesus is still our healer. You see, it doesn't matter whether it's a little cold, a little sniffle. It doesn't matter if you got an earache. It doesn't matter if you got a tummy ache. It doesn't matter if you've got something even more serious. There are some people that have to deal with, even children have to deal sometimes with cancer. But Jesus can heal it. You see, the Bible said that by his stripes, by his stripes, we are healed. And what does that mean, stripes? Well, what it means is that they took, before they uh, put Jesus on the cross, they took a whip, and they whipped him, and they laid stripes across his back, blood stripes across his back, cuts across his back, and it was a horrible sight. And I don't want to go into too much detail over it, but it's a, it was a terrible thing. But you see, Jesus' blood is what buys our healing. It's because Jesus, not Jesus never did anything wrong. Jesus never sinned. But... He was called on to be that sacrifice for sin, and by his stripes we are healed, but not only of sin, but also of disease. If you have a headache, by his stripes, you are healed. If you have a tummy ache, by his stripes, you are healed. Do you have a cold? By his stripes, you are healed. Do you have a fever? Do you have, a, do you have this sickness that people are talking about right now? By his stripes, you are healed. Do you have, uh, do you have things that, are, that people dread, things like cancer or something like that? By his stripes, you are healed. Now, people say, well, you know, I knew somebody that had cancer and they died. Yes, but, you know, when we die, we go to heaven and there's no more sickness there. You are healed. But even here on earth, and I know people here on earth that have been healed, no matter what disease you have. You see, because when we say, when we talk about God, God is greater than anything. It doesn't matter what is on this earth. God is greater. And so, no matter what happens to us, God is greater. And when Jesus died for our healing, Jesus died for our healing for everything. It doesn't matter what it is. And so, you might see, maybe, maybe your parents are afraid of this disease that's going on right now. Maybe people you know are afraid of it. And people are, oh my goodness, what's going to happen? I'm, I'm so afraid I'm going to get sick. By his stripes, you are healed. You see, when, when Moses uh, lifted up that bronze snake in the wilderness, people had to trust in God's word. God said, if you look at that snake, 
you'll be healed. And people had to trust in that word. And, and when Jesus died on the cross, it was for our healing. And if we will trust in God's word and we will look to Jesus, our healer, we'll be healed. We can be healed of any disease. Even the disease of sin. If you've done something wrong, and you know you, you know if you have, because when you do something wrong, there's something inside of you that says, hey, you did wrong. You look to Jesus. You look to Jesus and say, Jesus, I'm sorry. Jesus, forgive me of my sin. And then you stop doing the sin. You see, the Bible uses a word that's called repent. And what does repent mean? I'm going to go ahead and erase the rest of this. Some people think that repent is just saying, I'm sorry. But it's actually more than just that. It's uh, repentance is, you know, saying I'm sorry is just the beginning of repentance. Now, I don't have anybody to use as an example here. So let's just say that this card is God. And when I'm sinning, I have turned my back on God and I'm walking away from God. And I'm doing wrong. But there comes a point where I'm saying, what am I doing? What am I doing? This is wrong. I shouldn't be doing this. And I stop what I'm doing. I stop walking away from God. I stop doing wrong. And I say, God, I'm sorry. And I turn around. And I say, God, I'm so sorry for what I did. Now, if I don't do anything more, what good does that do me? None. I have to turn my back on what I was doing wrong. And I have to start walking back toward God. That's what repentance means. And if we repent of our sins, so it's not just saying I'm sorry, but it's also changing our ways. And it's changing what we're doing. Where we were doing wrong before, now we're doing right. And Jesus said that when people were caught in sins. And Jesus forgave them for their sins, but he said, go your way and sin no more. Stop doing what you were doing before and start doing what you know is right. And that is what repentance is. And when we repent of our sins, God honors that and he will save us and he will forgive us our sins. And then we will be able to go to heaven. Did you know that sin separates us from God? It does. And the Bible said that the wages of sin is death. What is death? Death is separation from God. And we don't want that. But rather, we want to be in close fellowship with God. We want to be close friends with God. We want to be the children of God. And God would be proud to call us his children. He loves us so much. I just want to leave you with this. We all do wrong. Israel complained. They knew that God had taken care of them in the past, but they forgot. And they began to complain against God. And God wasn't happy with that. And some of the things that we do today, we know that God has provided for us. We know that God has been good to us. And still we complain to God about things. And we need to stop doing that. But you see, just as when the punishment for their Israelite sin came, the snakes that came and bit them, and Moses put up that pole with the snake on it. And they said, if you just look at that snake up on the pole, you're going to live. You're going to be healed of your snake bite. And you won't die. Just the same way for our sins. If we will just look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith is what the Bible says. That is, he's the one that, he's the one that created our faith. It's our faith is in him. And if we will just look, at, to, look to him and trust in Jesus to forgive us of our sins, and then stop doing what we were doing before, then we will also be healed of our sin. And we'll be saved, and we'll be able to live forever with God. And not just the sin, but also even, the, even healing for our bodies. We have that right uh, because of Jesus dying on the cross and, and being ri risen from the dead. And you know what? It's this week that we uh, observed that, where Jesus died upon the cross. That's what 
Easter celebrates the resurrection of Jesus when Jesus had been uh, had been killed for for our sins, really, and he was put up on the cross. And three days later, he rose again. That's what we call Easter, is Jesus rising again. And I hope you join us next week. But let me just finish up saying this. Jesus loves you. And Jesus has a way for you to be healed of your diseases and to be healed of your sins. And he wants you to trust in him. He wants you to ask him for forgiveness and to allow him to change your life. And he wants you to change your life and stop doing what you're wrong and start and start doing what's right. And you will be uh, you will be friends with God and you'll be in close uh, companionship, close fellowship with God. Kids, I love you. And I hope that this has been a good lesson for you. And I hope we'll see you again next week. Now, if you haven't had a chance to. Uh, to get on our Facebook page for Life Church Kids, go ask your parents to go ahead and contact one of the four of us, uh, Sister Donna.